When the brown bull was completely out of sight, Lane and Morgan looked at the vision webs as if they were consolation prizes for something that had been lost. In reality, these represented her bright future, disguised as hard work and dressed in overalls. Hmm, disguised as hard work and dressed in overalls. Lane repeated. A scarecrow appeared out of nowhere near the clothesline, and Morgan turned into a raven that landed on its shoulder. Lane was amazed at how quickly Morgan could shapeshift. She thought maybe she could shapeshift too, since she and Morgan were basically the same person, but at the moment she was too afraid to try. In stories, Morgan was depicted as a raven who landed on Kukulin's shoulder at the time of his death. I heard a story about a raven once, Lane said. Do you want to hear it? The raven cawed. Lane began, Once, raven went to a wise man with a complaint. Wise man, she said, I dig in the garbage and feed on the spoils no one wants. I am happy and grateful, but sometimes I feel lonely and ashamed. The people don't like me. When they see me, they chase me away. They think I'm filthy. Even though I wash myself in the creek every evening, I wish I could be a peacock, for she is the loveliest most cherished of all the birds. Shortly after, Raven saw a beautiful peacock approaching the wise man and hid herself in a bush. She could not believe her eyes and her ears. Peacock also had a complaint. Wise man, Peacock said, I am always sought after and hunted for my beauty. The people hunt me and steal my feathers. I wish I were a raven, for she must be the happiest and freest of all birds. As soon as Raven heard the tale, she became Morgan once more. It happened as quickly as a branch snapping and falling to the ground. In place of the scarecrow was now a giant pile of straw. And Lane walked over to it. She picked up the overalls and put them on. These are more fitting for where I am in life, she thought. These spider webs look like visions because they are, Lane said, looking at Morgan, who is back to being herself. Lane thought that, like Spider, it was going to take a lot of patience and determination to form fibers of this quality, and by fibers she meant stories, but she knew it was worth it because her hard work was laying a strong foundation for a life more beautiful than she could imagine. Marilyn said some scientists from the future Injected the cow with spider DNA, Lane said. Marilyn had said this at staffing, and it felt like Lane herself was wafting in a distant dream. It was what makes these fibers come out of their milk. Now she was reliving these strange conversations, a bizarre love triangle between fact and fiction. That was when... The logic of dreams slammed into the logic of real life. 
Was she trying to follow these Irish myths because they were the compass of her dreams? One scholar of Irish myth said it was the work of fools, but Lane was obsessed, and who wasn't a fool in love? To Lane, the discordant strings of the stories and her dreams fit together just enough to form something like rare and beautiful asymmetrical necklaces. What human hadn't made the mistake of trying to find the perfections in imperfect humans and been disappointed? But at least these stories wouldn't disappoint her. She thought, Dawn comes from the future like me. He now produces these threads that are making Morgan lovesick over Cacolin. They make Morgan's love visions unbreakable though they are illusions. And all this because of cloning? It's not that Lane was against cloning because it's probably useful in a lot of ways, but maybe she just wished people thought more about it. From her idealistic standpoint, she thought tampering too much with nature wasn't good because nature also existed for itself like Lane and like the brown bull, and like a dream once it reaches maturity. It belongs to everyone and also no one, and deserves respect for its sacred mystery. It didn't make sense, but kind of. Mostly, she just thought that we shouldn't take for granted what is used for our benefit, since we are not entitled to anything, and we don't know how long it will last. But since she was upset, and for the purpose of the story, Lane thought the scientists from the future had royally screwed her ancestors and messed up her love life in the present. Thanks a lot. Yet, it wouldn't all end up working out for the greater good, wouldn't it? She remembered the African proverb, as you do for your ancestors, your children will do for you, and this seemed to resonate. She thought her ancestors had more respect for mystery, and this allowed miracles to happen for them, like Stonehenge and other anomalies. Like, how come no one knows how eels reproduce, as they are never spotted to have been seen coupling? It was Lane's view that we aren't supposed to know everything because it intrudes upon nature's boundaries to be sovereign. But she and most people she knew liked to control and understand even if it wasn't for her benefit. Lane was starting to enjoy the magic of this strange world more and more. Even magic had a fleeting nature. The mountain feels overwhelmed as the rocks and stream pile in around it, yet adjust to the pressure. While those around it rise above it, the mountain does not become discouraged. It resigns itself to knowing it's becoming more than it's ever been before. Though there is a lot of pressure, you are achieving success in your field and moving closer to your goal. While water has the power to overrun everything, it practices restraint. Lane just had to suspend her disbelief against the rising tide of her ambitions a little bit more, like one of those large cliffs off the Irish coastline. With the right conditions of faith and hope and patience, her success visions would become more than the mere strings they were at present and perhaps stand the test of time. At least with these, she knew, because hard work can make anything come true. Hard work and focus is something within one's control, while love is something that's not. What do you think of my visions? Morgan asked. 
Well, Lane said, even though her imagination sometimes steered her on the wrong path, it also helped her to believe unimaginable things could be possible, like that she could write a novel. Even if Max had done his part in making her believe the make-believe, there was a real dream she could pursue. Speechless, eh? Morgan said. For us, sometimes illusion and reality look the same. They're unbreakable. Go on, test their strength, Morgan said. See if you can break them. That's another nonsensical thing but true about hearts. They can become so strong from being broken and take us on wild paths we would never have imagined ourselves going. See, what did I tell you? Soft as silk and as strong as fishing wire, Morgan said. You only need to spend your energy and focus on what you want to achieve, Lane said. Not bother with these love potions. Of course, Morgan didn't understand. Chasing love was like hunting a wild animal in the forest. The poor thing was only going to run away, scared, or if cornered, snarl and thrash you. But Morgan was convinced. She'd seen one of these rabbits with antler horns and had become convinced they existed in the wild. She wondered how could she have allowed herself to get so hooked on a normal small-town guy and make him into a great mythical hero of ancient Ireland called Cacolan. understood why she clutched onto her visions for so long, but maybe it was the fear of being really alone, even if she was already alone and doing just fine. And like one of her students at the school said, she did not go alone, God was with her. Morgan shrugged and Lane pinched the bridge of her nose, scuffing up the dirt with her shoe. A big cloud hung over them. Who or what was blocking her way to the light? But the way the sun shone on the grass behind the cloud made it look like she was standing in the inner courtyard near her apartment in Boston. Come on, Morgan said, take me to Cacolin. She held out her arm, but Lane objected. Can you tell me a little more about Barogue? Is there no reason to, to her trajectory? I'll tell you along the way, Morgan said, we have no time to spare, as we must warn him of Maeve's passing. I have legs of steel, but my eyes aren't so good at seeing, Morgan said. They shuffled forward in silence. Lane left the empty cup turned over on the ground as they started walking by the garden and down the hill into unknown territory. The little garden still searching for permanent sunlight. Lane looked back, noticing the rooster weather vane standing on the roof of the cottage, spinning around. That too vanished as they moved into the hills. It was time to look forward. And wrapped in that velvety green tunnel of Irish countryside, she forgot for a time about the magic cow and all the good milk she'd wasted.